Hey there Mountaineer fans and welcome into another edition of Breaking the Press with head men's basketball coach from Southern Vermont College, Dan Engelstad. Our first Breaking the Press of the New Year. Dan, Happy New Year, but enough of the niceties, let's get down to business. You had two games before the Christmas break, both in the Rotary of Frederick Holiday Classic down in the Maryland area. Now, six of your guys are from Maryland, and Saturday night's game, which you won over Penn State Harrisburg 88-84 to in double overtime, there was a big contingency rooting for Southern Vermont that night, and it kind of helped give you guys more of a home court advantage, if you will. Do you think that had any impact on that game? And t Speak about how nice it was for the guys to get back to their home area and play in front of their family and friends there. Yeah, well, it was not only nice for them, it was, it was nice for me to go home. And uh, we, we fed off that energy. They, it was great to see a lot of the families there, and because uh, I do have a lot of players, as you mentioned, from that surrounding D.C. area. Uh, so it was nice to see the friends and family, especially right before the holiday. And um, so I, I know our guys were up for the game, and it was a great game. You know, we got a chance to play in a, a double overtime game, and I, I told our guys after it, it's it's good to get in those games. It's good to get that feel of um, being in a tight one where you're up, and then you know. A, I wish we didn't have such poor clock management down the stretch of the game and made some free throws and it wouldn't have gotten to that point, but um, we, we knew they were a good team and, and they made some big shots and they had a guy that made 40 points in, in one game, so anytime someone gets rolling like that, you know you're in for a, a good ball game, but uh, it, it was it was nice to be back home, uh, got a chance to not only uh, experience some, some great basketball, but we got a chance to go to the White House and got a chance to go to the Capitol beating and, and meet Senator Leahy, and, uh, which was a really neat experience for uh, everybody included. So it was a, a positive trip all the way around, and um, you know, it, was, it was nice to see that support from our fans. Unfortunately, in the championship game, you guys lost to the hosting Hood College by a score of 80-66. to 66. Now, you guys average 83.7 points per game. Is that loss any indication of you need to score at least 80 if you're going to have a chance at winning? We got to score the basketball, man. That's part of the game, especially for us. And um, it was a culmination of things that night. I mean, we turned the ball over 20 times, which is if we do that, it's, it's hard to win games. And and they pressed us, and we're a pressing team. And um, it's hard to prepare for that with a short notice, you know, with one day of preparation and, and actually no, no actual practice time. So um, we knew they were a good team, and and like a lot of teams, they played zone and. Uh, we're a better shooting team than we've shown a couple of the games, especially the ones we've lost. They've all kind of felt the same way. And um, anytime you shoot that poor percentage and make two threes in a game, especially when they're daring you to make them, um, it becomes tough. So uh, we didn't have the same, you know, we didn't have the legs that we had the first night, and it wasn't the same pop from the beginning. And, and that being said, it was still a five point game with um, five minutes to go, and uh, we just um, had some turnovers and some miscues that uh, didn't allow us to. Um, pull out the win, but uh, something that we can learn on, and we do know that we we want to score points and want to play in transition as much as possible, and we didn't do that um, as much the following day um, as we did at Penn State Harrisburg. Now that being said, the Penn State Harrisburg game was in the 50s, and we were up for the most part until the double overtimes, and then there was a lot of scoring in the first and second overtime. So um, hopefully, the, we can make some shots and, and score some more points going forward. Now, I know on a previous episode of Breaking the Press, we've talked about your free throw shooting. Bit of a struggle over that weekend when it came to the line. However, you guys were hitting them when it came down to the final minutes of the game and more of those clutch situations. It's hard to say were you to hit them all in the first half that you wouldn't need the clutch ones in the second half. You never know how that's going to play out. But talk about how the coaching staff is looking at that aspect of your guys' game right now going into the conference schedule this week. Yeah, Free throws are a hard thing. Right? Because it's a lot of it's a mental it's a mentality. It's what your approach is at the line, and um, you don't want to overthink it. Because if you overthink it, that's when you start missing more. So we do have our guys shoot a lot of free throws in practice, and um, we're putting some more pressure free throws into the mix. Where uh, if they miss a certain amount, that's how many sprints that they have, and um, just trying to find different ways to have them be successful at the line. And um, you know, we have hit some clutch ones, but. Uh, it has to become more consistent because we don't want that to come and, and bite us uh, at some point throughout the course of the season. So we're uh, we're aware of the problem. We're just trying to find the best solution to try to fix it. So um, if you got any suggestions, please let me know. <laughs> not when it comes to free throw shooting, absolutely not. 
You guys are sitting at 7-3 and three right now going into the conference schedule, as we mentioned, or going back into it as you only had the one game prior to the end of the semester. Seems like that Williams game was years ago at this point. How ready do you think this team is going into, again, the NECC schedule where you have Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday games, almost, you know, seems like back to back to back. You open up with Becker Tuesday night, a team that's traditionally pretty good. Yeah, well, we had, to, we had to shake off some of the rust, you know, got a chance to go home and be with family and celebrate Christmas and the new year and uh, got the guys back and to be expected, they were a little out of shape. So we've had to get some of that stuff off and, and refresh on what we're trying to do as well as we're adding some pieces and um, adding a couple different offensive uh, tweaks and defensive stuff as well. So just getting the guys back into the rhythm, but I, I feel good with where we're at. I think the last couple practices have been really high energy and, and good, so we're hoping to pick back up and improve from where we were um, previously. Uh, that being said, you know, all these games matter. And as you just pointed out, we play three games in a year. So I told the guys, it's basically an NBA schedule. We play three games a week for the next two months, um, with the exception at the end of January, we get a little bit of a break. So we have to be ready, and then it's on us as a staff to manage our guys in terms of minutes and how practices are going, because you want to make sure you stay and have strong practices, but you don't want the guys' legs to not be fresh. So it's finding that balance and that push and pull. And, um, but I think we're ready. Uh, great challenge with this Becker team that we play tomorrow. A great challenge against a team that has, I guess I looked at the record book, we're 0-10 against. So it's a team that we've never beat. So another, um, hopefully, check mark that we can cross off. You know, we've been able to do that with Williams, as you mentioned. It was a, feels like a long time ago, but uh, that was a school we hadn't beaten to win the Tri-State Tournament. So we're hoping that we can keep the momentum going forward and, and play a good Becker team and on the road, which is never easy to do. And um, it'll, it'll be a good challenge for us tomorrow. As you mentioned, you are on the road at Becker Tuesday night. Then you get to come back for a home game on Thursday against Newberry and then finish up the week with a Saturday endeavor to Lesley University, which we just found out will likely be pushed back to later in that night, which allows you for some more travel time down to the Boston area on a Saturday afternoon. It's never necessarily a bad thing. Right. Newberry and Leslie right now both struggling when it comes to the record, and they're both 0-2 in conference. Becker, on the other hand, as we mentioned, 4-5 and going into tomorrow night's game, 1-0 and in the conference, so after Tuesday night, somebody will have a loss when it comes to league play. What are your thoughts and expectations or the coaching staff as a whole looking at this week and where do you expect to be at this point next week? you gotta you got to take it one game at a time in league play because that record that you have going into it means nothing. I talked to the guys, we got three seasons. you got the non-conference play, you got your conference play, and then you get the playoffs. And as you know, we're a one pretty much for the most part of one big league, so uh, you want to be playing your best basketball towards that. So we want to keep improving. Um, know that every league game's tough, especially when you go on the road. It's never easy in any league, in any conference. So um, we want to take it one game at a time. There's not a game that we're going to go into and not expect or try to win the basketball game. Like we don't, I'm not one of the coaches that believes, you know, like, let's try to get the split here. Let's go 2-1. and one. We're going this week looking to try to be 3-0. and oh. That's what we want to do, but we know we can't look past Becker. And then once but we can't look past, we got to stay in the moment and stay with the process. And I think that will help us just... Stay in each play, and as you go forward, hopefully, you know, you look up at the scoreboard at the end of the day, that you're on top. So, um, you know, we, we, we go into every game trying to win, but we also know that every game is a challenge, and our opponents from here on out are going to be good, and they're league really points. So, you know, now, we, looking at things where they stand right now, as we mentioned, we're 10 games into the season, pretty much halfway through. Speak about, you know, your first year and how it's gone so far, and some of the main highlights aside from the record that have really struck you when you think about it going to bed at night or whatever you do? I've been impressed with this group and the, the ability to, to come together in such a short amount of time. It's not easy, especially at the Division three level where you can only work with them for so much amount of time. But just I'm proud of the way our guys compete and how we come back. And if we do have faced a little bit of adversity, we come back and we practice harder and we're hungry. And I love that this group hates losing as much as the staff does. You know, I think they get a chip on their shoulder when they lose. And so that excites me going forward. I've learned so much in my first couple months here as a head coach. I've, um, you know, been in, there's things that I've done that I'm scratching my head. Why did I do that? And hopefully I can improve on and, and we get better. But um, been really appreciative of the effort that 
staff and players has given this far. And if we can continue that, I think our program's heading in a really special direction. And um, we're going to keep trying to push the bar higher and higher. Very good. Well, thanks again, Coach, for joining us this week. Good luck with all your league games throughout the next few days. And we'll hope to speak, be speaking about those wins uh, when we join you next week here on Breaking the Press. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. And we hope to see you next week as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Coach, Mike. Thanks, Mike.